That's a heart. Kingdom Hearts! So originally I was planning on doing a multi-part story recap of the Kingdom Hearts series to coincide with the release of Kingdom Hearts 3 in a few days. Which is still surreal to say. However, I decided against it because A, I don't have time to make that kind of video, and B, there are already a bunch of videos on this platform that recap the series story better than I ever could. Two of which I've actually linked in the description, those being Frustrated Jacob's entire Kingdom Hearts story in 20 minutes video, if you're looking for something fast to catch you up quickly and most concisely, and Everglow's amazing Kingdom Hearts timeline series. If you have a weekend to spare, I highly recommend you dive headfirst into what is probably the best representation of this series here on YouTube. Instead, today we're going to get a little personal. For all two of you who haven't noticed, I've covered Kingdom Hearts on my channel for, well, the better half of this channel's existence. That being said, I've never really had the chance to talk about my history with this series and why it means so much to me. So today, I thought we'd do a little deep dive into why I love Kingdom Hearts, going through each game in the series, talking about why I love some, and dislike others, while showcasing why I love this series so dearly. Beloved. <laughs> So let's start with the age-old question, how did I discover Kingdom Hearts? Flashback to circa 2006-2007, ya boy was young and impressionable and the only video games he could get away with playing around his parents were the all-age appropriate ones that were more than likely licensed from the latest movie, TV, whatever was cool at the time franchise. So that meant quite a few Disney games. There were a lot that I remember fondly playing, mainly on the PlayStation 2, as that was the only modern console that I had. Games like Chicken Little, The Incredibles, and actually a lot of Pixar games now that I remember. Funny how that comes full circle. So with that in mind, I was perusing Disney Interactive's website before I knew what this website called 2U was, and I saw a number of cool games. However, three in particular stood out, and they all had the same name attached to it. That being... Disney Sports! I'm talking soccer! Basketball! Even skateboarding! For the cool kids! No, of course I'm talking about Kingdom Hearts. Those three obviously being the first three Kingdom Hearts games. The original Kingdom Hearts for PlayStation 2, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories for the Game Boy Advance, and Kingdom Hearts 2, also for the PlayStation 2. Now on Disney Interactive's site, both Kingdom Hearts 1 and Chain of Memories only had screenshots to show off their game, and they looked pretty cool, pretty enticing as it were. Hell, I even had a Game Boy Advance at the time, so Chain of Memories could have been a cool intro to the series if I wanted it to be. But it wasn't. Neither of them were. Because Kingdom Hearts 2 didn't just have screenshots, it also had a trailer. Specifically, this one. My little 10 year old brain was blown after laying eyes on that trailer. All these Disney characters I love in one game, doing cool stuff with some neat anime people, and a total banger in the background that I couldn't stop humming? Suffice it to say, I really wanted this game. Badly. I begged my parents to let me get it, and the next time we were in my local EB Games, I got my hands on it as soon as I could. My dad was with me when I bought it, and I'll never forget what the cashier told him as we were buying it. Paraphrasing of course, but he said, this is one of those games you will never want to trade in. I've been playing it non-stop recently, it's so good. Dude was probably in his early to mid-30s and was saying that this Disney game with the nice and clean E10 rating in the bottom left corner there was worth holding onto in the future? My dude, I don't know if you ever come across this video, but if you do, let it be known that I took that quote seriously. You could say, I got it memorized. I'm so flattered! I still have my original copy of Kingdom Hearts 2 to this day, and to say that playing it was one of the most magical experiences I've ever had is an understatement. I fell in love with this game almost instantaneously. The gameplay, the music, the story, the characters, yeah that 3 hour prologue with Roxas, one of my favorite sequences in the series to this day. FIGHT ME! I loved this game so much that after only delving into it for maybe a few weeks, I immediately went out and bought the original game at my local Blockbuster. Yes kids, Blockbuster was still a thing in the mid 2000s. And what do you know, I fell in love with the first game too. Granted, Kingdom Hearts 
2 was still my favorite, but at that point, it didn't matter. What did was that I found my first franchise that I was unbiasedly a fan of. I'll talk more about what I mean by that later, but to wrap things up, I started looking more into the series on the internet, learned a whole lot more about some more games that were coming, and I've been a fan of the series ever since. And my love of the series has only grown with each new installment, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start talking about each game now, shall we? I'm sure you've heard this a bunch of times, but the first Kingdom Hearts truly is so simple. The game has a very basic premise, basic concepts, basic character archetypes, basic beaches, and overall just feels, well, basic. Maybe it had to do with it being the first action RPG of its type, but basically... <laughs> Everything about the game at face value is pretty bare bones, and considering where the series goes from here is kind of refreshing to look back on. Sora, the series' main protagonist, is a very simple character to relate to, being the ever optimist and always striving to do the right thing, usually in the face of literally impossible odds. His best friend, Riku, was an excellent foil and had his own interesting arc, which we'll talk about later. By the way, beating him in Hollow Bastion after several times of trial and error as a kid is one of the most fulfilling moments in the series, hands down. Visiting all these Disney worlds was a joy and several of the classic Disney villains served as legitimate threats to our heroes. Maleficent was a true force to be reckoned with and it's kinda depressing now to see where her character went, but hey, what can you do? And yeah, the story does start to get a bit bonkers after the introduction of Ansem Seeker of Darkness and his true goal, but for the most part, Kingdom Hearts 1 played things very straightforward and paid off in each way it could. The ending of this game is still a tearjerker, and even though a badass secret ending let us know that there was a possibility of more to come, this was still gut-wrenching, if not still a satisfying way to wrap this first story. If I had one big gripe with Kingdom Hearts 1, it's that the gameplay does not hold up. Sure, classic attacks like Ars Arcanum and Sonic Blade are fun to pull off and magic was neat to use, but good god are these controls incredibly clunky, especially in stages that require intense platforming like Deep Jungle- Oh for god's sake! <coughs> so yeah, Kingdom Hearts 1 was pretty good. Okay, this is where things start to get a little crazy. First off, a confession. I never got to play the original Chain of Memories on Game Boy Advance. I mean, I tried on an emulator once, but it just wasn't the same. Instead, I had to wait until the PlayStation 2 remake, Kingdom Hearts Re-Chain of Memories, made its way to North America in 2008. But let me tell you, the wait was worth it. Re-Chain of Memories is not perfect, the card-based battle system I know isn't for everyone, and the retread of Disney World really does make it feel like this game was made just to put Kingdom Hearts 1 on a portable system. Won't be the last time, but we'll get there. However, taking that all away, in my opinion, Rechain of Memories is one of the series' most underrated titles. The gameplay, while jarring at first, is very inventive and fun to utilize, and the story? Oh baby boy, do we have a wondrous thing called character development going on here! Sora's time in Castle Oblivion helps flesh out the character beyond his usual cheery archetype, as we see him experience more heartbreak and betrayal that, at times, even put him at odds with his only two friends. Don't worry, they reconcile, which, may I add, also pays off in one of the most hype moments in the entire series. You won't ever be alone. It's always been the three of us, and we stick together. And that is how it's going to stay. We were introduced to new characters like Naminé, these mysterious guys in black coats from an organization, including a particular fan favorite. Hello. God, Axel is so cool. There was even a second campaign for the game that starred Riku, fleshing out his character more, and let me tell you, it did wonders for him. I've stated plenty of times in the past that Riku is my favorite character, and this game does a lot to show why. All the while, the game does a decent amount of setup for what eventually would come in a proper Kingdom Hearts sequel. And thankfully, we wouldn't have to wait long to see that setup pay off. I could make a 7 hour video expressing my love for Kingdom Hearts 2 and only be scratching the surface. It's not hard to understand why this is everyone's favorite game in the series because it just does a lot right. The story moves forward in interesting and dynamic ways, new characters are introduced that deepen the world's lore, my boy Roxas that I mentioned earlier, name another character in the series who invokes as much emotional depth as this man, I'll wait! And of course the high point of topics concerning Kingdom Hearts 2, the gameplay. Oh my god, is combat in Kingdom Hearts 2 so freaking smooth! While Kingdom Hearts 1 was a fun adventure that got people's attention, Kingdom Hearts 2 was the game that officially put the series on the map. It's not perfect, until Final Mix came along, post-game material was a joke and world design was bare bones, but the material the base game still had offered an intense, fun, and magical experience that I'm sure I won't have for a long time. 
and the game's secret movie that offered a look at what the next experience might entail, and loud it wasn't beautiful, this is still to this day the best secret movie, hands down, filled people with high expectation for what would come in the eventual third installment. So we assumed after maybe one more smaller title we were going to get that next installment, right? So after Kingdom Hearts 2, series director Tetsuya Nomura was tasked by Square Enix to work on an upcoming Final Fantasy spin-off, some tiny little game called Final Fantasy Vs. 13. Wonder what ever happened to that game. So because of this, as well as taking the crew behind the first two Kingdom Hearts games with him, Nomura couldn't start work on another mainline Kingdom Hearts title for a while. Instead, at Tokyo Game Show 2007, Square unveiled three new Kingdom Hearts titles, which I myself have dubbed the Handheld Trilogy three new games that were set to expand the Kingdom Hearts universe as well as tie into an eventual third mainline entry, and all three were to be released on handheld titles. Those games were Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2 for the Nintendo DS, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep for the PlayStation Portable, and Kingdom Hearts Coded for limited mobile device. And yes, those are actually all of their names. Days was the first game to be released in 2009, and it was... okay. Days mostly gets points for its story, which many people will agree is one of the series' best. It tried to be a deeper character study for Roxas, showing his time in Organization 13, and it mostly delivers, showing his evolving friendship with Axel and a new character named Shion, seeing the evil machination Xemnas had going on in the background, showing the background of Axel and Syax's relationship. It was all interesting to learn about, and this scene constantly tears me up, y'all know what it is. I mostly chalk this up to Days having some of the better writing out of the series, mainly in the dialogue department, which is also part of its problem and why a lot of people aren't really fond of this title. The pacing is so damn slow! Days' gameplay really did not do the game any favors in this situation. God, the mission system was a bad way to break up the flow of the story. I get they were trying to emulate the PlayStation 2's gameplay mechanics for a handheld device more closely this time, but man did it not work. The panel system was a nightmare to figure out, and aside from a few new cool battle mechanics like limit attacks, the game was just not fun to play, especially with atrocious boss design. Looking at you, ruler in the sky! So yeah, Days was a double-edged sword, a lot to like, but not enough to play through more than once. So remember that awesome secret ending featured at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 that everyone and their mother was convinced was going to be Kingdom Hearts 3? Yeah, that wasn't the case. Instead, this was foreshadowing Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, a prequel set 10 years before Kingdom Hearts 1, focusing on three new heroes, Terra, Aqua, and Ventus. No, that is not Roxas, and I won't explain why because we don't have all day. Of the three handheld titles that were announced, this was the one that piqued everyone's interest, mine included. And the game certainly didn't disappoint. I remember first getting the game, and I played through both Terra and Ventus' campaigns in one day. It was a lot of fun. Birth by Sleep has some flaws, major, major flaws, but I still count it as one of my favorite entries in the series. The Wayfinder trio, while not as fleshed out as Sora and company, are still compelling enough to be invested in. The plot moved forward in a direction that finally put a lot of the series' long-standing plot threads into perspective, despite also giving us a buttload of more questions, and set us up for what would be an epic next adventure for Sora. Birth by Sleep's gameplay, while not as polished and smooth as Kingdom Hearts 2, is still fun to experiment with and pull off some fun-looking combat, despite some admitted game-breaking attacks and really, really poor boss design. Like, 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 what even is this? But yeah, Birth by Sleep is a solid entry I thoroughly enjoyed, and I was beyond excited for what would come in the eventual Kingdom Hearts 3. That game was next, right? Uh, not yet. Okay, this one. So, Coded was the last of these portable titles to be announced, though it was actually the first to be released for mobile phones in Japan across eight monthly episodes, starting in 2009. It wouldn't be until 2011 when the game would make its way to North America in the same fashion as Rechain of Memories, as Kingdom Hearts Recoded for the Nintendo DS, packaging all eight episodes into an overarching narrative with new elements added to tie further into the series proper. And man do people not like this game. Now this is another Kingdom Hearts title I myself haven't played, though looking at the gameplay from an outsider's perspective it looks pretty fun. Though talking about the story, I'm actually going to defend Coded a bit. <gasps> yeah, yeah, I know, shocking. To me, I feel Coded works more as a standalone title in the series. Sure, it doesn't tie into the series extensively, but that doesn't really bother me. It gives the overarching plot some time to breathe and let characters have a separate adventure away from the action for a little bit. 
we actually get to focus on our supporting Disney cast for a change, which is nice. Giving Mickey, Donald, and Goofy a story is actually kind of refreshing, even though versions of Sora and Riku are still present to play a role. Maleficent is once again the antagonist and is actually portrayed as a legit threat again, which is nice, even if it doesn't last long, but whatever. I feel like Recoda gets a bad rep from fans and it's really not that bad. It's a nice little fun distraction from the main action that I kind of appreciate. But whatever, the handheld trilogy is done and out of the way. Surely this means that Kingdom Hearts 3 is up next, right? Right? <sighs> this game. Yep, we had one more game before Kingdom Hearts 3 came around, and this is where the series started to get on our nerves. Now, Dream Drop Distance is not a bad game per se, but it definitely serves as the weakest entry to me. Remember what I was saying with Recoded, how the lack of plot progression actually didn't bother me? Yeah, well, Dream Drop Distance makes up for it here, and god does it piss me off in places. What was supposed to be a story that put the series' extensive and complicated plot into focus only muddled the plot further beyond comprehension. Time travel, Nomura? Really? Sora's naivete is cranked up to 11, making him just well, dumb, and overall it put the series into this really awkward position where, yeah, we're all set up for Kingdom Hearts 3, but the story is so convoluted for that newcomers jumping in would be lost beyond all comprehension. The one thing Dream Drop Distance has going for it is that the gameplay is actually a lot of fun, when it's not broken like Birth by Sleep. God, Balloonra is too powerful! The introduction to Flow Motion offered a new fun way to platform, which is a nice addition, and Dream Eaters, while annoying to constantly take care of, are a neat addition nonetheless. At this point, Kingdom Hearts was starting to become a joke in the gaming community. Too many spin-offs and side games with an overcomplicated plot that nobody would take seriously anymore. There needed to be something massive that wasn't just the HD remasters that were coming out to win people back over. And then, at E3 2013, Square Enix parted the heavens and Papa Nomura delivered unto us a glorious gift. Wait a second. No. Oh my god. God. Don't. Don't do this to me! Don't, Don't do this to me! You're done, Sky! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm done! I'm done! I can die now! Sky, it's Kingdom Hearts 3! What am I looking at? Oh my god! It's it! Oh my god, Sky, you're losing it! I think I was almost on the verge of tears when Kingdom Hearts 3 was finally announced. While we were still going to get remasters of the previous games in the meantime, the idea that the long-awaited third number entry was finally on its way filled me with so much joy it's impossible to describe. We were still going to have to wait a while, hell Nomura even thinks the game was announced too early, but it was nonetheless a good feeling to have. Every trailer that came out after the fact was just continuously getting me hyped up. Square even released one more small entry to show us what the game would play like, that title being Kingdom Hearts 0.2 Birth by Sleep A Fragmentary Passage. Yes, that is actually the title. Part of the Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue Collection. Yes, that is actually the title. It shows us Aqua's time in the Realm of Darkness, and kind of serves as a prologue to Kingdom Hearts 3, and it's actually not bad. It mostly plays damage control for Dream Drop Distance's mess of a story, but it's still pretty straightforward to follow along, and the gameplay is pretty fun to play, giving us an idea of how Kingdom Hearts 3 will play, which is pretty smooth. Not as smooth as Kingdom Hearts 2, but again, that game is king, no title was ever gonna top it. And with that collection out of the way, there was nothing left. Kingdom Hearts 3's release date was announced a few months later to thunderous praise, only get pushed back again, but still to some praise, and here we are now, only a few days out from the game's release. How will it hold up to this standard of hype? Well, I guess only time will tell. May your heart be your guiding key.
Okay. I just got back from downtown, and, uh, I got my pre-order for Kingdom Hearts 3. That's still surreal, my god. It's currently Wednesday, uh, the 23rd of January, and, uh, as of recording this, Kingdom Hearts 3 will be released in another two days over in Japan, and then it'll be another six days released over here in North America, as well as worldwide. And then that'll be it. I can only put into so many words how much I love this series, and I don't think the previous few minutes have really covered it that much. But instead, I think I'm just going to boil it down to this. I said early on in the video that Kingdom Hearts was the first franchise that I became unbiasedly a fan of. And a lot of that seemed to come from the fact that it was so different from what everybody else liked. Especially when it came to gaming, uh, everyone I knew was fans of whatever was popular or would make them popular, be part of the it crowd, and uh, here I was with my silly little kids game with Disney characters in an anime setting. But it was something that I love, that was unique from the pack, and that sort of carried with me to this day. It taught me that it was okay to be different from everyone else, and that I didn't have to be embarrassed about whatever it was that I liked. And like I said, that continues to this day. These games have not just inspired me creatively uh, as a writer and an artist, um, but it's also helped shape my lifestyle in a way. My tastes in certain media, my approach to the world at large, a lot of it has stemmed from Kingdom Hearts. It's silly, obviously, but it's what's bonded me with this series through the years, through all of its ups and downs. I love this series so much, and I don't think I'll ever experience an attachment to a piece of media like this ever again. Kingdom Hearts 3 is not going to entirely deliver on its 10 years of anticipation. I know that. It's an impossible task. Hell, even Final Fantasy XV wasn't able to tackle it. But I know that once I get the chance to finally play it, I'll get that experience of first playing through Kingdom Hearts 2 for the first time. And really, that's all that matters to me. So for those of you who are joining this series for the first time with this game, like myself and a bunch of us did for Kingdom Hearts 2, I hope you enjoy the game. And I hope you get the chance to play some of the other titles, and maybe even get the chance to join our community of people who all want to play this game and cherish this series so that together we can all experience the magic.